this picture why i am stressing again and again that if you know the normal histology if you know the normal morphology then when i'll be telling you about the certain pathological conditions of the thyroid gland you will be quickly like just in a snap you will be able to appreciate that what is the abnormality you will be able to catch it in the first go so that is my main goal of telling you the normal before so if you look at this normal histological picture of a thyroid gland this is how a thyroid gland looks like under the microscope so can you see these are the various thyroid follicles so these are the various thyroid these are the various thyroid follicles okay so if you see this pink pink material in there this pink material is the colloid so can i say these are the colloid filled thyroid follicles okay so now these are the colloid filled thyroid follicles and can you see these cells can you see this cells these cells these these cells these cells these cells these are the these are the follicular epithelial cells these are what these are the follicular epithelial cells these are the low cuboidal cells okay these are the low cuboidal cells and can you see this cell this cell this cell what is this cell this is a para follicular or the c cell para follicular or the c cell so this is the normal histology of a thyroid gland the thyroid gland looks like this when a pathologist sees it under a microscope so yes after knowing the normal histology now we move to the aims question the, the recent question that was asked in the aims june exam 2020 okay what was the question the question was what is the adequacy criteria of thyroid efficacy you know what i was approached by a lot of students at that point of time and and i totally agree to all of them that yes this cytology topic is not meant for undergraduate level it is a post graduate level i totally totally believe in that totally understand that but क्या कर सकते हैं इफ द एम्स पीपल हैव आस्ड अबाउट इट सो ऑब्वियसली वी हैव टू नो अबाउट इट सो डोंट वरी आई विल टेल यू द नॉट ओनली द आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन बट ऑल्सो इन माई टूडे सेशन आई टेल यू सर्टेन important points along with the answer to this question which i feel because because i feel the like aims people have touched this topic now so it becomes a very important topic for future mcqs so i have included certain pictures and certain points regarding the cytology of the thyroid gland so which i feel which can be an important source of the future mcqs as well so don't worry in my today's session uh, later on when i'll be talking about the pathology logical entities i'll tell you the cytological aspects for now we will understand what this question was what is the answer to this question which was asked and some extra points which i think can become future mcqs okay so yes we move forward to the question that was asked which was the adequacy criteria of thyroid efficacy so you know we pathologist we always follow we pathologists we follow a certain reporting system of thyroid cytopathology okay and this cyto uh, this particular system of thyroid cytopathology is called as bethesda this is called as bethesda system of reporting thyroid thyroid cytopathology and yes this bethesda system is also used for reporting pap smears as well so for now this bethesda system of thyroid pathology has a particular definition that when you will call a fna thyroid sample as adequate so what is the definition that is given in this reporting system that a thyroid fna sample a thyroid fna sample is considered to be adequate if you are able to see a minimum of six group of well visualized well visualized means that the staining should be good you are able to appreciate all the cells there should not be any artifying defects there should not be any obscuring blood so a minimum of six groups of the well visualized that is well stained undistorted and unobstructed follicular cells okay six groups and yes 
within each group there should be at least 10 cells okay so minimum you should see well visualized six follicular groups and per group should have at least 10 cells okay so so basically clearly we can say that these follicular cells do not believe in social distancing they want to be together they want to be like in six groups within 10 cells in each group okay so this is what a bethesda system says that when you call a thyroid fnac to be adequate but now there is a catch there is a catch to it that there are certain exceptions there are certain exceptions when you will ignore when you can ignore this criteria so there are three exceptions to this rule one is if you see a cytological smear and you see certain non like not so good looking cells or not so normal cells or the cells showing something like atypical features so at that point of time a pathologist cannot say that no no i am not seeing any follicular groups or 10 cells or like that so i am not going to report this line no you can't say that you can't ignore the uh, not so good looking cells you cannot ignore the cytological atypia then you have to report that case so one such exception is solid nodules with cytological atypia second exception is you know where there are certain cases which i'll be telling you in detail in my, later in my video that there are certain cases like hashimoto's thyroiditis or granulomatous thyroiditis or even in a case of thyroid abscess what you see in the smear you see that these patients show a large number of inflammatory cells lymphocytes plasma cells a large number of inflammatory cells in that case also you cannot ignore that I am not seeing the follicular cells group that that means I will not report it no you can't do that you can't ignore the inflammatory cells so in that case you can accept this criteria and you have to report this case and the third one is the colloid nodules that means if you are seeing a lot of colloid like abundant colloid in your smear so you will refer this case as benign and satisfactory for evolution so you'll report this case okay so this was regarding the definition of adequacy of a fna thyroid smear and what are the three exceptions where you can ignore it okay so after knowing this if we see at this smear if i see at this smear can i say that this is an adequate smear or an inadequate smear in this smear entire smear we are just seeing the blood cells nothing else only the blood cells so then this is a inadequate smear this is a inadequate smear okay so now if we look at this smear what are these cells what are these cells can you see can you see this these are the cilia can you see these are the cilia so what are these cells these are the respiratory epithelial cells so what might have happened when the fnac was being done on this patient there might have been accidental rupture of trachea so that has caused these respiratory epithelial cells to come up in the smear so again can i say this smear to be adequate or inadequate i'll call this smear as an inadequate smear okay understood now we move further if you look at this smear